Hey guys, so I wanted to jump in here and talk about what options you have if you are wanting to find out if you have an underactive thyroid, but either you don't know what to ask for, or when you ask your GP, they're not doing all of the tests that you that are required basically to assess whether you have an underactive thyroid and um, perhaps even what might be driving it. So first of all, to as properly, as properly assess whether you have an underactive thyroid, as a bare minimum, you wanna be looking for TSH, free T4, free T3, thyroid antibodies, and that includes thyroperoxidase antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies as a minimum. I would also say a random urinary iodine is a really appropriate thing to ask for straight off the bat anyway, because by doing that, you can also look at whether an iodine deficiency is potentially driving the underactive thyroid. So that's part one. That's what you need to ask for or request from your GP. The thing that you need to know is technically speaking, like from a medical perspective, the only thing that they're usually gonna test for is TSH. And the only reason why they may test for T4 and T3 is if your TSH is out of range. The problem with that is that the reference range for thyroid, for TSH, sorry, is incredibly large and inappropriate in my opinion. Um, and so you may be, may be within the normal range but completely out of the functional range and probably suffering from an underactive thyroid. So you can do your best to try and ask for the further tests and if you still come up again, like drawing blank and they're just not going to play ball and order your tests for you, um, firstly, like recognize that sometimes they're not doing it, A, because they don't realize or B, because they are worried about getting flagged for ordering unnecessary tests, which I think is bullshit, but just so you understand where that's coming from. The second option that you have is that you can actually, in Australia and New Zealand, um, and probably overseas as well, but I'm just gonna speak for Australia and New Zealand, is you can actually order your own thyroid test. So there's a, com there's a few companies out there, but the one that I have am most familiar with is a company called Ice Cream. They are in Australia and New Zealand, and you can get the advanced thyroid check, which goes through TSH, free T4, free T3, and thyroid antibodies. So I think that that's a good backup option. You don't need a doctor or a practitioner or anyone really in order to be able to order those tests. Though the caveat with that is that if you have no intention of seeing someone when you get the results, then I try to <laughs> try not to do that because I really think that it takes someone that is skilled in interpreting thyroid results, patterns, understanding the complex negative feedbacks that happen in thyroid physiology to tell you what is going on with your thyroid. So don't just look at the test and think, oh yeah, they're all in the green, which is like, okay, range, seems like it's not the issue because A, patterns matter and the relationship between the different markers matter. And B, if you've got enough symptoms to be going and ordering that test, so enough symptoms of an underactive thyroid to warrant you paying for that test and going and ordering it, then it means that you probably do have some kind of issue with your thyroid or something similar and pathology is one part of the overall story so never do I ever base like my assessment or recommendations on pathology alone and I get sent like people often send me their pictures of their blood test results and ask me what I think which um you know, I say I can't comment because the reality is that, you know, it's part of the story. It's it's one, it's a snapshot in time, helpful snapshot in time, but it doesn't capture everything. And that's where comprehensive, like questioning and listening to you speak to me about your story, about your symptoms, um, is so helpful and really, really important. So just make sure if you do use that kind of um, service where you can order whatever you want, order the blood test you want, make sure you take them to someone who gets how to interpret them um, and can actually help you use them because otherwise it may just be a waste of your money um, in that regard. So 
that is what I would recommend doing. Other kind of DIY ways you can screen yourself. So screen, not test definitively, but screen yourself for an underactive thyroid would be body temperature tracking. So tracking your basal body temperature when you first wake up in the morning and seeing where that sits. And also you can use my free thyroid symptom checker quiz, which is on my website, nataliekdouglas.com. And that'll give you an idea as to whether, yes, a thyroid issue is coming up or no, it's not. The thing you also need to remember, just backtracking a little bit with blood tests, is make sure they're always done fasting first thing in the morning, um, and like in relation to when you're just testing your thyroid. So fasting first thing in the morning. If you're currently on thyroid medication, do not take your thyroid medication before the test. Take it with you to the lab. Take it after the test. Um, also make sure that if you're getting your iodine tested at, at that same time, which is a urine test, make sure that you avoid any iodine rich foods 24 hours before. So that would include any supplements containing iodine, see, um, any kind of like seaweed salt, seaweed, seafood, iodized sea salt, avoid those things. And if you can try and avoid large amounts of cruciferous vegetables 24 hours before. So those would be things like um, cauliflower, um, cabbage, sweet potato is another one, grapefruit, kale, did I say kale? Maybe I did. Anyway, those ones, just Google goitrogenic vegetables and avoid most of those, or at least large amounts of them 24 hours before. It will just make your iodine results more accurate. Um, make sure when you get an iodine test done that you also ask the GP or whoever's doing it for you to get a creatinine reading as well um, because that will help you know how concentrated your urine sample is which will make the result more accurate and again make sure you have someone to help you interpret what those results mean and do the conversion um, in terms of making that iodine and creatinine uh, make sense basically. Um, so I think that was it, maybe, hopefully. Um, if you have any questions about testing your thyroid, screening for thyroid issues, um, working with a GP around that side of things, what you can and can't request, how all of that kind of stuff, let me know. But just make sure you're not ignoring the little niggles. Like too many times, like people come to me after suffering for years and years and years and years and years and I think us females um to kind of pick on us a little bit are really guilty of just like soldiering on and putting everyone else before ourselves and not listening to the little niggles but I can tell you now if you listen to the niggles before they become big you know distracting signs and symptoms it's so much easier and faster to heal but if you let yourself suffer, just little things that keep popping up and being like, hey, I'm a problem, I'm a problem, and you keep pushing them down, you know, if you've been doing that for a decade or even, you know, two years, three years, four years, you're going to have to expect that it's going to take some time to heal then. Um, and so, tr like, the moral of that story is try not to wait until it gets so bad that you can no longer ignore it, suppress it, make excuses for it, fog it off as like, oh, I'm just tired. Like, don't let it get to that point. Do something about it now. Um, and you'll find that your whole healing process is shorter, less expensive and um, just easier. That's all.